I like the story of Lamborghini saying, go fuck yourself. I'm going to build something that's looks cooler and and you know i'm gonna try to build the best exotic car that i can and i'm gonna try to do it better than you i love that story the reason why i relate more to lamborghini than ferrari Mm. and maybe subconsciously like them better because lamborghini approached ferrari with i can't remember if it was a clutch or a transmission and th- this this might even be inaccurate, but it doesn't matter. The story all f- kind of falls into place. Yeah. Approached Ferrari saying, hey, there's an issue with your cars. I might have the solution. Let's partner and be this Italian juggernaut, right? And Ferrari basically said, go fuck yourself. Stick to your tractors. So then that lit a fire under Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. And he built what is today in my opinion what the the epitome of what supercars are today he mm. built he built the model of supercars being this elaborate you know spaceship futuristic looking thing if you mm-hmm. look at especially the Countach that was the first one that a lot of people were, I'm pretty sure, you know, I don't know all the heritage and the history. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. Apparently I don't really the car care. that saved the brand. Is that, so what, is that, is that what you hear? Okay. Well then there you go. Right. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's a while. If you look at that car and think, wow, that car was out at this time in mm-hmm. like the eighties or like, it's a wild car. Mm-hmm. It looks wild. It doesn't look anything like what you would see in a Ferrari. It's arguably Ferrari, Ferrari, when I think of them, I think of like beautiful cars, right? Mm -hmm. Lamborghini, when I think of them, I think of aggressive. I think of, you know, uh, innovative, you know, not in terms of technology, but the look and, you know, the, the doors and it's, it's, it's an event when you, when you get out of a Lamborghini, it's a fucking event. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about it. I like the underdog story i i love that that story of someone telling him that he can't do it or he's not capable of doing it and then all of a sudden he produces it and it's maybe not the better car but it's seen by many as the epitome of wall poster car Mm -hmm. like poster the, the, the poster child of supercars, mm-hmm. right? That's what I like about the brand. And and, uh, and I, I don't care about how many fucking Le Mans races and all that bullshit. I don't, I don't give a fuck about that. That's not, I'm not driving around EC Row pretending like I'm in the fucking 24 hours of Le Mans or, or, or like on, on a fucking Formula One track. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't care about that. Number one, people buy exotic cars and stuff like that to project their success. Let's, let's all be real here. Okay, let's not... Mm-hmm. try to you know lie about that type of narrative yeah. and then number two i like the story of lamborghini saying go fuck yourself i'm gonna build something uh that looks cooler and and you know i'm gonna try to build the best exotic car that i can and i'm gonna try to do it better than you i love that story